Okay, so at this point, we've introduced the, the threat analysis lifecycle. We've covered a bit about signals, their importance, uh, and now we've gone through and showed like some infrastructure chaining. Why would I want to apply this methodology, this, this concept of threat infrastructure analysis to my organization? Well, there's a number of different reasons. First and foremost, I mentioned this before, where it doesn't always have to be a reactive state. Security doesn't have to be that where I'm dealing and reacting to a potentially malicious attack or a breach on my network. Uh, instead, I can use the, this concept, this methodology, to proactively identify threats. And so we can identify related infrastructure, we can potentially uncover overlaps in uh, targeting uh, using the, the methodology that we explained here, and even some of the examples that we've already gone over. So I can, I can look to see any domains that might um, appear to be spelled like mine. Or have the same like a subdomain to somebody else, yeah. but my name is associated with it. That might be an indicator that something might be starting. Yeah, like you don't have to wait until you're dealing with an attack, and in fact, you shouldn't. Right. You should take that proactive step to basically go and start hunting down threats that may occur against your organization. Uh, and one of those ways is is looking for your brand inside of infrastructure. Uh, another one of those ways could be simply taking open source intelligence that's being produced on a regular basis from these security companies, looking at the indicators of compromise that they've produced and fanning out using this methodology on top of that data in order to find more information. And then you can then go take all of that data, block it inside of your network. You don't have to deal with that threat now. Or even looking internal from the outside to say, how do I appear on the internet? Am I running any infrastructure that might be susceptible to an attack? Yeah. Or a zero day that was just announced to look to say, do I have any of that infrastructure myself that I might need to shore up? Yeah, that's an excellent point that we talk uh, commonly about finding attacker infrastructure, but there's no reason why you can't apply the concept of threat infrastructure analysis or maybe just infrastructure analysis mm -hmm. to yourself and identify all of the different assets that you have existing externally facing online. So beyond doing the proactive aspect of this as well, uh, you have the ability to assess a potential threat. And so what we mean by that is, you know, Risk IQ has been collecting this data since 2009. So we have an extensive amount of history. Uh, and what we're looking for when we're dealing with attackers is something called TTPs, tactics, techniques, and procedures that they may be employing for their attack. Mm -hmm. And so to give an example of assessing a threat, you know, a, a less sophisticated uh, actor may choose to register a domain with their personal email address and their phone number, and they're not going to privacy protect that information, uh, and they're going to continue to use the same IP address over and over again to conduct their attack. Mm -hmm. Whereas a more sophisticated actor may actually go out and compromise someone else's infrastructure, uh, use a third-party domain, put it on top of that compromised infrastructure, and launch their attack from there. So they're not revealing anything. They're not leaking any uh, you know, data about, their, about themselves, mm -hmm. whereas the other one has leaked a whole bunch of information to us. And so by analyzing the data and the historical information that we have available to us, we can start to measure the potential sophistication of, a, of an adversary. How long have they been around? How often have they been employing these techniques? Have they advanced? Have they gotten worse? Have they gotten better? Um, and so on. Wonderful. And then lastly, uh, what I love about this most, this process, uh, and it speaks to the point that you raised of, of turning it in on yourself. You know, we mentioned before about collecting data, that being extremely important. Mm -hmm. What I like about this process is that you can identify gaps within your own organization. If you're going through and, and you're kind of conducting these investigations using the external data that we have, you should at the same time be asking, do I have the ability to pull in this NetFlow data? Can I put my own can I put my own version of a passive DNS sensor on my network? How are we managing our own who is information? Are we leaking out data that actors could use to find all of our assets? Right. And so to me, what's most important here is, yes, you can be proactive. Yeah, you can assess the threats that are coming after you. But more importantly, you want to identify the gaps in your own collection and make sure that you have the appropriate logging, that you have the appropriate uh, devices and the appropriate oversight of all the information on your network. Because like we said before, if you're breached, the external data would be helpful, but it's not anything like having the internal. And if, if you don't have that information, then you, you're you blind. You yeah. can't make a decision. You don't know what's happened. You don't know the extent or if you've eradicated it. 
Yeah, I think one of the the nice uh, statistics that's often cited in the uh, one of the Verizon uh, breach reports that they do every year is that it takes upwards of six months, I think 180 days uh, before someone actually identifies that they've been compromised. Mm -hmm. 180 days is a long period of time. time. If you don't have logs being collected uh, and you're, you're, you might be dealing with a breach today, but your investigation is going to be informed by all the information you have. And if you don't have that information, you may not know how long the actors have been inside your network. Or you're not retaining that data. If you're just overriding the logs, you're going to lose it as well. Yeah. So it's really important that beyond the external threat concepts and, and using the, the methodology to, to certainly surface and assess threat actors, you really want to be assessing yourself at the same time and your organization and ensuring that you have the level, the appropriate level of maturity uh, on your collection as well.